Anywho, welcome to another episode of the Social Proof Podcast. My name is Donnie Wiggins, and I am sitting here with my brother in success, David Shans. Shout out to us. Yeah, man. We are here. Happy to be here to talk entrepreneurship. We're going to get into some stuff, especially shouts out to uh, Morning Meetup and Actionable CEO. They've been on with us in this foolishness for the last 30, 45 minutes before we got live. Mm -hmm. So they get kind of the behind the scenes stuff. So I don't understand why someone would not invest in our communities, but you know, go ahead and fail if you want, you know? Go ahead and fail. Uh, and also, Actionable CEO and Morning Meetup not only get to watch this episode every, or get first access to it every single time uh, we drop an episode, but any questions that are being asked, we are prioritizing actionable CEO and morning meetup. And that's just a very small little bonus that we offer. The groups are the bomb. I had facts. my third reported millionaire um, and a young lady last night specifically on our call said that she made her monthly goal in one day. Mm, mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah. go. Let's get yeah. somebody. Inside of the morning meetup, like there are so many people who were thinking about entrepreneurship, who were scared to make the move, who are now entrepreneurs, who have been going super strong. You know what I love about the morning meetup, too, is that I see people who have come in that were afraid to talk, that mm -hmm. were super shy, super timid. They're leaders now. Like they're out here. For they're sure. volunteering to do stuff. And. Um, I hope Actionable CEO can be as great as Morning Meetup. Well, we hope later. to be as great as Actionable CEO. <laughs> and in fact, May, what is it, 2nd? May 3rd. May 3rd, mm -hmm. um, we're bringing our communities together for a free live training. They don't pay for anything. In fact, we pay for them to eat and we do a live workshop with us yeah. for our community. So it's both virtual and in person. This would be something that people would pay more than the cost for the whole year yeah. for either one of our programs yeah. to do one of these. But we take care of the community. So May 3rd, we can't wait to see Morning Meetup and Actionable CEO in the building live. People are always like, yo, how do we connect with you? How can we get with you, Donnie? I'll join you got to be in the community. Come on. And in fact, these type of execution workshops that we do, you can't even buy a ticket you to. Can't if buy you a couldn't ticket. even offer us money for the ticket. You have to be an actionable CEO or morning meetup. Yep. So there's that, you guys. It I'm is. ready to podcast. All right, let's get to it. So I want to talk about this first. I don't like what's going on in hip hop right now. Mm. So, and this is, we don't normally do like what's hot topics, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on that I want to talk about in real time. I think we should do more of that. In real time conversation? In real time, yeah. Okay. So... I like it. Can I do like a a segment? I want to do like a segment. We should both have like fire. a segment where it's like this is this is the conversation that I talk about. That would be dope. And we're like talking and stuff. What would your segment be? I don't know. Let's think about it. I don't want it to be like drama, mm -hmm. but I want it to be um, something that's like in pop culture or something. Maybe it's the full transparency segment where you're talking about the emotions behind the stuff that people see in the front. What? Like the transparent side. Okay. So for instance, let's say, um, I don't know what's happening right now. What's happening in the world other than that. Um, okay. So like, the boat crashing into the bridge. The boat crashing into the bridge. Okay. So maybe your full transparency is about, your segment is about obviously what happened, but what happens economically behind that and then all the people that are affected by people making economical decisions when there's real humans that really have issues. I don't know how you I don't like that, it. but we'll keep thinking about it. I appreciate the, 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 the uh, suggestion. Um, I think you should. Why are you looking mad? Not good. <laughs> I just didn't. No, it's, I didn't explain it right. So I think that we should both start. So you guys, here's also the thing. Um, on Full Transparency Podcast and on Social Proof Podcast, we're kind of shifting a little bit the way that we're doing things. 
So I think that, ooh, maybe we should just change our set all together so people can see it's new. Like, maybe we should be at a table. Okay, so I was, okay, literally this morning thinking like a bookshelf. Not bookshelf, but something that we could put stuff there. Stuff? Mm -hmm. Like decor? Yeah, but stuff that identifies what we're into and what we like. Okay. Like shelving, kind of. So like obviously it. some books that we read mm -hmm. and then, you know, some shelving stuff one time. What if we get swinging chairs? Nah. Like? Nah. No? No swinging chairs. Okay. Well, I think we should just completely change it. How long have we been here? Two years? Two years. 2022. Yeah, two years. We've been on this set for two years. It's time for a makeover. Okay. Yeah, it's time for a makeover. The chairs are for sale. The chairs are going, whether y'all buy like them or not. Chair. Okay? It's been two years. It's time for a makeover. Not just a makeover. Hold on, whether they buy them or not. What do you mean exactly? <laughs> <laughs> whether y'all buy these chairs or not we will end up yes we're gonna make this over it's gonna be good yeah we're gonna we're gonna do a makeover okay all right anyway let's get to the potting okay so kendrick lamar sends a shot at drake and j cole right mm -hmm. i don't know where it came from i don't think he would do it just to be doing it Something okay. has has to us ha okay. has to have happened. Okay. J. Cole makes a song dissing Kendrick. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But the other day, he said on stage, yo, I felt horrible. It was messing with my spirit. I don't like J. Don't, Cole said it. Yeah, J. Cole said, I apologize. He threw the for first doing shot. That. Kendrick kind of threw the first That's shot. That's what I thought. And Jay responded. But Jay responded more directly at you, talking about some of your albums is trash and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. However, the other day, he said, I'm sorry for doing that. I was a clown for doing that. I shouldn't have. It's been bothering me for the last few days. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry. He was like, yo, if you got to take your shot, I'm a, my chin is ready. Go ahead and take your best shot. It's cool. But I want to apologize mm -hmm. because it was disturbing his peace. The hip hop community goes crazy. Mm -hmm. Jay Z and Nas would never. Dr. Dr. Dre would never. But my man did something and didn't feel good about it. So he's apologizing. When people aren't being vulnerable enough, people say, yo, you need to be more vulnerable. When you be when you be vulnerable, they're like, nah, man, up this hip hop, you need to rap. Yo, you yo, what's wrong with y'all? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just I don't I don't like how people responded. So I get why people want the beef to be of played course. out, right? I get it. It's entertaining. We all need something to do to occupy our time from home. Apparently, this came from, this stemmed from First Person Shooter. I think that Drake song mm -hmm. um, is where it stemmed from, but that was a Drake song. Yeah. Oh, him and J. Cole. Okay. Um, I, I fully understand why people want the beef and why they're disappointed, but what I don't believe people understand is that uh, J. Cole is a conscious rapper. He's not a beef rapper, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong. Um, and I think it was highly responsible of him to say, I didn't feel good about this. Yeah. I apologize. I don't have any issue. Like, the beef, I don't know. I, I think I'm just beyond the beef narrative. The Cardi and Megan and, you know, all these didn't... All these different uh, situations, I just think it's I think it's trash. Mm -hmm. I also think not just J. Cole and Kendrick. First of all, shout out to K to J. Cole because that was really big of him yeah, to sure. apologize. Um, because certain kinds of beef are clown behavior. It, yeah. it really is. What I also think is uh, unfortunate that's happening in hip hop is Young Miami and JT. What they doing? They're going at it. They um, beefing. They're beefing. Yeah. They're beefing, and I hate to see it because I hate to see it, especially in women, um, because it's like, dang, can we just get along? Can we can we stay together? Like, can we be partners? I hate to see it for women. I hate to see it in a business partnership. Like, um, a lot of people think that when Miami started dating Diddy, um, that she changed. Like, she she flipped on JT and kind of changed. JT was. She she vented and said that Miami like really never has her back. She never like speaks when she's getting dragged through 
um, all the blogs and stuff, Miami doesn't speak up on her defense. But if she uh, if it were her other best friend, Saucy Santana, Miami is like, don't come for him and oh, wow. all of this stuff. So they were going back and forth a couple of days ago on social media. And apparently they ended up calling each other on the phone and per their last tweet or post, it was all worked out. But why, why we got to keep bringing beef to the Internet? Like yeah, that. I mean, some people, as if we're coming from an entrepreneurial perspective, it works. Like some people have built their whole careers based off beef. Yeah, you know what I mean. It 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 works for because people want to be sensationalized. I mean, I've even thought about it. Like coming, I think we might have talked about it years ago. Like yo, let's create and manufacture beef or something like that, and then the end we come together or something like that. I don't know for entertainment. I think we talked about that you years never had ago. That conversation we for sure had that conversation. Never. Maybe I had it, but let's head. do it. I don't know, but I'm saying, but people love people love that kind of stuff. So well, I, I understand it from a marketing perspective, and for the people who f fuel the fire, they stand to make a lot of money from it. So uh, maybe there's people who are pulling we, strings in the background. We actually did do it. Okay, let's also talk about this, John Hope Bryant. I look up to you so much. Shouts out to John Hope. Bryant. Shot, shots out to John Hope Bryant. I have DM'd this successful man so many times to ask him to be on this podcast this podcast full transparency mr bryant we need you yeah um i saw i reached out a couple times too i saw two weeks ago that um he commented on a post which was a very positive post about me um he commented on a post and it was it was posted by a billionaire what was the post? um the post was, I'm going to pull it up right now. Um, was it the one about the millionaires or something like that? And the age? Um, it was, uh, it was, um, hold on one second. I'm trying to pull it up. Um, it is, so anyway, Janice Bryant Howroyd, if you can go to her page, maybe you'll see it. Janice Bryant How Howroyd is also. All of that's her name? Janice Bryant Howroyd, W-H-O-W. She posted it. R-O-Y-D. Yeah. Let's see which yeah. one she posted. She posted, and I was completely, it's J. Bryant Howroyd is her Instagram. J. Bryant Howroyd. Mm-hmm. How, oh, did Howroyd. She, okay. Did she take it down? Oh, there yeah. it is. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the one yeah, about the, the billionaire, right? Yep. So J. Bryant Howroyd, shout out to you too, because I absolutely love you and we want you on our podcast too. Um, she reposted this very positive post and John Hope Bryant like liked it or um, and, and so I was really, really like fanning out that that happened. Right. And so then I sent him another DM and was like, thank you so much for like liking or I think he shared it. He shared mm -hmm. it. Thank you so much for sharing this this post about me, blah, blah, blah. But then yesterday I'm getting tags in this post from John Hope Bryant and he shared the skit that we did mm -hmm. of the dinner bill. Right. So we actually, and I felt so, I sent you the skit and was like, I sent you the post and was like, of all the things that he could post, <laughs> right. of all the great information that we put out, we have Mr. Bryant posting, reposting this um, drama, right? And I was two things. Number one, I believe he's a billionaire as well. Um, there's mm -hmm. two, I think so. There's two things. I was surprised that a conversation like that would even come across his radar, like that he would even be remotely interested in having that discussion because he opened it up for discussion on his page. Um, but then number two, I was also like, can you post something of our, some of our positive content? Some positive stuff. Yeah. Can you, po can you post? But some it's not that stuff? easy to, it's not that easy to get people to even be remotely interested in more good information. He delivers great information. He sees a lot of good information across his, his desk. Right. But when you see something that isn't, I think that that skit was masterful. For sure. I don't think it was, we knew it was masterful while we were doing it. We just thought, oh, we're going to do something cool. But it was masterful because it creates a really good conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not super raunchy, but it's raunchy enough to create, spark some sort of conversation. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see why he would pick that and say, let's have a conversation because it sparks conversation. Yeah, I think um, I think for me, it was kind of like, uh, wow, you have these conversations like people with your level of success and your level of responsibility and all these things. 
have the time to sit and have a, you know, have a conversation about uh, who's going to pay the bill, the man or everybody, all these women pay for themselves. Number one, it was just kind of shocking to me that he would just even touch that kind of content because there's some content that you'll never see me post about, you know, on my page. I just don't have the capacity to have that kind of conversation. So it, it was like, hmm, OK, is John Hope Bryant really engaged with this particular conversation? Is he really uh, invested in it or is he trying to like do like the rest of us and increase engagement on his page? Like put something out there that's kind of controversial and increase engagement. What's what is it? But Mr. Bryant, we've got some really good positive in content that's gone viral a million times and mm. we'd love to send you some to share. Yeah. I was watching. I was like, dang, he cool with me. He was like, yeah, that brother handled it. He was real smooth. I said, you're right. You're, you're right. right. Super smooth out here. And 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 and. I commented on the post and said, hey, you guys, I'm the birthday girl. This was a skit. And then David comes and responds to my comment and says, no, it wasn't. And I'm waiting on my apology. <laughs> so now people are going ham on me again, thinking that I'm lying and trying to save face. And whatever. I'm an entertainer. And for the record, we did not way. create that skit to make money. Uh, David is the only person who made money I'm off the only this. <laughs> <laughs> I posted it on Facebook. That's really what he was the only person who thought to post it for monetization. Yes. And another a side note, okay? Yo, shouts out to, and I'm not even going to say her name, but a young lady, she was on the hot seat, right? And it, 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 did, it didn't go good. I think it was valuable information. And what we were sharing with the young lady, valuable information so i take a clip how we normally take the clips and it's it's an engaging clip so when i take those clips it's for engagement and she said something to the effect like i scammed right and then the second clip was something like um i don't have the business in my name it's in someone else's name so when I see the flags, I'm like, yo, now that's crazy. And there's going to be a lot of people that weigh in. But the whole episode, we're trying to get her to understand that that right there isn't right. Right. And we're trying to teach you how to move forward. But we can't move forward until we fix this part. So me and 500 on that. So we do, a, a, we do another. First off, I want to say this, Donnie, because this is very, very important. Okay. If you look at those two posts, there's people saying, Dave is the cops. He's Vlad. You're going to get people jammed up. Why would you post this clip of this person? Do like, yo, you're, you're going to get them caught or something like that. Well, before that, I, I recall people in the comments saying, yo, you need people on there. If they're scammers, you need to call them out. And, and I'm not saying she's a scammer. She's young and she's building a business. I don't know if... She, I, like on the level, I'm, I'm not calling her a scammer. And um, she just said it, so I posted a clip. But what do y'all want? Like, do you do you want us not to post clips of someone that's doing something wrong and then you feel bad for that person because you're like, oh, you shouldn't post that um, because she's doing something wrong. And if we don't, it's like, oh, well, you got people on there. Won't you ask them about this? And they did something wrong. What do you want from me? What do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Golly. <laughs> so what is, what is it? What is it? There's a lot of things you can do with $500. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about double $500. Um, you could buy a course or you can learn something for $500. But I have something better for you to do with the $500. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one -on -one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. 
Every single month we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month and every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic and I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. And I have to add this little note. Okay. We didn't always know. We didn't always. When people were doing yes. crazy stuff. In the beginning, we were, we were building a podcast like everybody Correct. else. And we were bringing on guests who were, you know, at that time. And, and there's only been a couple of people that have been sketchy. And I guess there are some people that have done something crazy. And win. There are oh, some people out. that have done some things here. But here's the thing. There's some people who have done some crazy stuff that we found out about way after you or we interviewed them on the yes. podcast. Right. And, Do we, and oh, sorry, no, let me let me add this because I just said that. If she would not have come on and said that herself, I'm not I'm not going to say, hey, y'all, this person's doing something crazy. You know what I mean? So I'm, I, we're not in the business of finding people and calling people out. We're now, not here to seek out scammers. If you come on the show. Right. And you say it, then you said it. But then, you know, we have an obligation to. All right, let's have this conversation. Well, and let's put this on. Let's okay. put this out there. If there's anybody who has been called a scammer and you want to come clean up your name on the Social Proof podcast, I would love to enter, enter, entertain that. Now, be careful, though, because I'm coming at you. OK, just know if you want if. Let me, I'm just, I'm going to make this a very public statement. If people have been calling you a scammer and you know in your heart, you're not a scammer. Hit me up. If you want to come on the podcast, come on. And we're going to have the conversation. However, just know my objective is to one, find out why people are calling you a scammer. My objective isn't to clear your name. That will be your responsibility. But if you want to come on here and have that conversation, come on with it. But it, it's not going to be easy because I'm not on your side. Yeah, I'm uh, listen. I, you're guilty until proven innocent if you sit in this chair. So this is my public invitation to anyone that's been called a scammer. If you want to come on, open invitation. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Now I just want to get that off my chest. Yeah. No. 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 That's a real thing. And and um. There are going to be people who attack that. Oh, now you're bringing more attention to, you know, the scammers. Listen, we just want to highlight good entrepreneurship. And if we've had people on this platform that have later done some things, um, we have taken accountability and pulled those episodes mm -hmm. down if they're promoting their business. Um, I know I did a, a podcast episode, even on full transparency, that people have questioned and it wasn't necessarily me taking anybody's side. It was me doing, you know, letting somebody explain themselves. And then it's up to y'all to determine what you think. Right. I'm not on either side here, but I will say early on, um, I even said like there, I don't know if I want to do the interviews <laughs> anymore Oh yeah, for because sure. I was combative. Um, and, and that's also why you guys think I'm so masculine because I just can't go for it. I'm sitting here and I'm like in real time, like, nah, that's some bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the episode uh, that, that was like a final straw for me, but also understand like we don't have foresight into what people are going to do later. Yeah. We, if you are building an incredible business and we see that you've got testimonials and reviews, which everybody who has been on this platform has mm -hmm. Everybody on this plat who has been on this platform has had receipts. They've had people praising them. They've had all kinds of things um, that's going on. And also just because a person has an issue with somebody doesn't make right. them a scammer. Just because a customer or client had a bad experience, it doesn't mean that you're a scammer. People have called me and you a scammer For before. Sure. And furthest thing from the truth, but we're not here to debate that either. We got enough people who have done good business with us yeah. and have been impacted. So we're, we're not 
hopping on the side of calling you a scammer. We're also not hopping on the side of defending you. That's yeah. up to you. That's up, sure. to, that's up to you. 100%. And I think, like, if somebody... And a lot of the stuff be based on some sort of like speculation of a person based on a narrative that somebody else created. So if somebody let's so I'm, I'm still not saying nothing about Diddy because I don't know what happened until he comes out of his mouth and say, yo, I did that. Or there's some sort of court filing that says they did that. So like, well, at, this, there is some paperwork. That's been filed. I'm not. He hasn't been. If, hasn't I'm not been charged accu- with something. I'm not accusing him of anything. No, well, I'm saying anybody can file some paperwork. Yeah, I'm not accusing him of anything, but I think we know enough to know that uh, something had to happen. We don't know. No, because even before all of this court stuff, there were just people, you know, in in all these interviews that are coming back to like now bite him in the butt. I don't know that anything illegal happened, but I know that they were wild. They had some wild stuff going on. Okay. They had some good, interesting, wild stuff are you, happening. Are you masculine? Am I masculine? Yeah. Um, I believe that I have a masculine and feminine side, as I believe that all women and men have masculine and feminine sides. So you're, you're a tough exterior masculine. It woman. depends on the setting. It really does. When I am handling business, I have a very tough exterior. Um, when I am in the presence of other married men as a woman... I have a tough ex- exterior because I've experienced what having a soft exterior in those settings mm-hmm. could mean. Yep. When I am with my friends, just chilling, I have a very soft exterior. So when you are in a relationship, you don't have a masculine, ex- you don't have a, that tough masculine experience exterior when you're in a relationship. It depends on what the situation calls for. So, so you're not a soft woman in a relationship. It depends on, yes. I'm both, and you're not going to back me into a corner to it's say It's not otherwise. a corner. What I'm saying is, I'm just, I I'm just, am, I'm moving a point. No, 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 if, no. If, okay, I am look, both. But there's enough narrative out here that will show that you are tough and you are hard and you are not soft. Oh, there's, for sure. There's enough people saying, "Well, look at this interview. Look how she talked to this person," and that's the narrative that. And somebody can say, no, she's 100% masculine in all areas of life. Well, they do it every day. That's my point. Yeah. So what we have right now. But they're not wrong. But what we have right now is a bunch of people that create a, no, you've said they're wrong about you. No, 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 no. That's a terrible analogy because they're not wrong. People who judge me based on what they've seen me. And and for clarity, the internet only sees me in business. Whenever I post myself, like my cute little pictures, that's that exudes nothing but feminine energy. It can't, you know, so I show you what you want, but I say they're not wrong because most people see me in this setting in this setting. It doesn't serve me to be all soft and I have to have an opinion. I have to be a personality. I have to be able to match your energy and to most people that's masculine. So I get why they believe that's masculine because the evidence shows it. They don't get to see us at lunch. They don't get to see me and a man. They don't get to see me with my friends. So I understand it. I under, there are parts of that that's true. They just don't have the full picture. So the same thing would be said like, oh, yeah, Donnie has some masculine energy in her because that's what Donnie shows the world. That's all they need to see. They don't need to see me cuddled up in the palm of some man's hands mm-hmm. and how I treat my man. Like, you don't have to see that a- sure. until I choose to sh- show it. But my point is. Anything, any type of narrative can be created. Yeah, for they sure. Can, they can create a 100% solid case that you are that way all the time. Yeah. And until I saw something with my own eyes, until that person says, this is what I did, I'm not the person to uh, to point the finger at somebody saying, yo, they're wrong. Because, they're yo, shout, shout out to like my man 500. I don't, I don't believe he's scammed anybody. He's helped a lot of people, has thousands of people in his community. Whatever, like I'll make a post and somebody says something, like we made a post, somebody says something, and it's like, bro, like what's what's up with you? That's you can create a narrative about, about anybody. But until you get some some core evidence, nobody, I don't know, man. I don't I don't like that. My job isn't to point people out. And again, people have called me scammers, you scammer, a bunch of people have sca- like, come on, bro. Like Yeah, and then also sometimes what we have to understand is that 
people buy into the narrative of other people that they look up to. Mm -hmm. So if we sat here on this show and said, this person is a scammer, here's why, blah, blah, blah. All the people who look to us for direction and information would believe that too. Yes. Now, now we've got hundreds or thousands of people calling these people scammers because they admire us and, and take our opinions to heart. So you have a lot of people who have uh, leadership ability over their own communities who are painting these narratives. And it could be because of something that really happened between them. But because they're angry and they're, you know, whatever it is, now their communities believe it. And I see it happen with women. I see it happen with men. It's just a poppy. It's just what happens. People go with the opinion of other people that they love and admire and respect. Yes. So uh, my particular point and where we're at right now in this conversation is if you want to come on to the show and talk about some sort of narrative that was painted just know i'm not on your side we're going to get down to it mm -hmm. this may not be a good conversation okay it may not help your brand the way you think it's going to help you might lose by being friends. able to clearing i mean if they come on you just got to know what it is yeah you might lose some friends if you want to come on it is what it is but my point is if somebody does something wrong i don't think your or my ministry is just like seeking out people who do it. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to do right by our people. I never started a business uh, understanding that I would one day have the responsibility of the influence I have today. Yeah. Like I really just wanted to do business and create a free lifestyle for my family. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing that, I'm like, oh, this is cool. I should tell everybody else about it too. And when I started telling everybody else about it, they then had questions and wanted to know how, right? Well, how do you do it? And then that turned into me teaching about it. And then so many people wanted to learn that I had to create an offer around it and actually charge because I feel like it's really cool to introduce people to information mm -hmm. uh, to, to help them become financially free. Like I understand what financial freedom means and uh, when I started my business, I didn't realize that that like being a coach makes you a low key celebrity in this space. You know what I mean? I didn't I didn't know that this, you know, the CEOs of major Fortune 500 companies aren't don't have the celebrity status that today's entrepreneurs. I'm like, there's bigger people to focus on. You know, yeah. all I'm trying to do is help other people become successful entrepreneurs. There yeah. are people with bigger missions that you could be focusing on right now. I didn't start this with the intent to become a, I'm not even comfortable saying it, right? Like it's just, I just didn't start the business with that intent. I'm usually, I've been pretty low key, loud when I need it to be. Um, I, I just, I, I didn't know that it would grow to this. I'm grateful for it and we're adjusting and we're adapting and we're pivoting but I, ne I was never in this to be, like, known, and I just wanted to be successful. Yeah. Hey, there is a responsibility that comes with it. Y'all think y'all want to be influential and all that kind of stuff. As soon as you get to a certain level, there's a big red target that's drawn on your back, and people hang on to every word. And, oh, God. Um, I, you know, when we first started, I just didn't believe in editing. Mm-hmm. I didn't believe in it. <laughs> we, I'm like, whatever we say, we done said it. But then you got to like think back. You got to sit back and really think, whoa, how can this be taken out of context? Or if we like, if people live in clips, like I said, whatever that clip says, that represents an hour and a half conversation. Yeah. Or this small clip represents who you are. The, the dinner skit. Yeah. This clip has painted a narrative of who you are. Yeah. We every live in that world. Every time I, I'll be on when that clip and others um, from the actual podcast, whenever I see, whenever a clip that has gone viral dies down, it's like a, it's like a relief oh, for me. Bro. Right. I'm like, Oh, thank God they're off that now. But when I see that somebody who is highly influential with a large audience reposted and it has picked up speed again, 
I literally get nauseous. That just start resurfacing. It starts resurfacing. <laughs> I literally, no, seriously, I literally feel nauseous when it happens. I cannot wait for this clip to die down about the dang on dinner. I, it wouldn't even matter if I deleted it off my page. It's been reposted so many times that it doesn't even matter. I cannot wait for this clip about um, the the guy asking me, do I feel like I'm easily easy to be led, even though I stand nah, on everything I said. Joint, I stand on everything that I said in that clip, but it's, it's still like people are still attacking me really? everything oh my god people are attacking me what are they um, saying on that one yo you 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 clicked on that joint you got a quotable by who yo how you, who? How you create a quotable of a two by who you yeah. thought you could be late led by who yeah <laughs> it's like you know but people are still like especially men and i can identify like all the little abusers that are in that thread um but people are are still they're still going to judge they're still going to say what they have to say they're still only going to want to hear the parts of it that they want to hear mm -hmm. and it's like did y'all see this episode did you see who i was talking to are you kidding me right mm -hmm. now um but yeah so when that clip dies down you know it, it's just going to be i can't wait but there's so many people who are attacking me every single day like my comments are flooded with people attacking me yeah. Based on that statement. So it's like you think you're doing something good. You have good intentions. You know, I really wanted to make a firm statement about that narrative, especially in that conversation. Um, and I wanted to enlighten people on like how silly and how trivial of a conversation this is, while also saying, how dare you even think you have the audacity to talk to me like to ask me a question like that given the context of this whole conversation and no matter sometimes how good you try to be people are going to find a way to spin it because yes. what I understand is everybody is unique in their mindset and their thought process and their past experiences that causes them to believe what they believe and there really is a group of a group of people and it's disgusting. The women, too. There are a group of women and men who have con been conditioned to believe that the only way a woman can be feminine and the only way a woman is 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 serving at, at in the right capacity is for her to sit still and shut up. Yeah. There are still a group of people who believe if you open your mouth, you are masculine. If you make your own money, you are masculine. If you're a boss, you're a masculine. And unless you just sit down and shut up and follow the, the lead of a man because he was born with a penis, you are operating out of order. I mean, I mean, yeah. And it drives me insane. This is going to go viral. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Reese, don't make this a clip. I, I think that was, a, I think that, that, that was, I mean, there are people who believe that for sure. Yeah. However, I think, I mean, well, the, the moral of the story is, do you really, really want to be impactful? And I don't care how much good you think you're doing for the world. There's going to be people who attack you. But how do we handle it? Do we, do we, do we ignore it? I've, I've gotten really, really good at ignoring the noise and focusing on the people that I am working for. You know what I mean? I focus on the people that support me and I support them. Yeah. I've been really, really good at that. Mm -hmm. But some people cannot stay out the comments and it becomes disheartening, man. And it makes you start to bite your tongue more, even though you have a message. So if you have something good to say, and let me ask the, the chat. If you have something good to say that, um, that 80% of the world needs to hear, do you not say it for the ridicule that's coming from the 20%? Because it's coming. I don't care who you are or what you say. J. Cole came on there and apologized like a grown man saying, this is bothering me. I shouldn't attack this brother. This is not good for our people. He comes on in front of thousands, probably tens of thousands of people at Dreamville. Tens of thousands, if not 100,000 people. I don't know how many people was there, but... He comes on and says, yo, I apologize publicly. If you got a shot to shoot at me, shoot it. It's cool. I'm not going to reply. This is messing with my spirit. 
And there's a large group of people that say, I'm throwing every J. Cole album away. I'm deleting all his music. I'm seeing this from prominent voices in hip hop. And I'm like, yo, this is disgusting. So the next time somebody has beef with somebody, they're going to double think and say, ooh, I want to apologize, but I can't. I can't because now people are going to say this and that. And now what does Kendrick do? Mm. What does he do? He probably got the fire song ready for my man to release, right? But now he's like, okay, do I not do it? But if I don't do it, they don't say he won. And then the narrative starts to shape what we do, how we think, and how we feel. This is a disgusting world we live in. Mm -hmm. It is. It's disgusting. I don't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to move in this space. That's why I'm trying so hard to do stuff that has my name not attached to it. Where, like, let me just. I don't know. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We have to like. I'm. Oh, it, it's it's just a thing. You really have to make a decision. Do you want? I mean, because there's easier paths. We wake up every single day in judgment. Oh, like yeah, for public sure. judgment is different than private judgment. You can hide from that. But we wake up every single day in judgment. Do you know, like people literally have these narratives of us based on these little tiny clips. And, and a lot of it could also be our fault. A lot of it is our fault because uh, we create clip. Well, we don't create the clips, but the team creates clips that are intended to make people go to the episode and watch it. Um, so sometimes the conversations are out of context and we kind of have to understand that too. Um, I just think right now we're in a space where, you know, we have the freedom of speech Mm -hmm. and with that comes the responsibility of, of handling judgment. You said earlier that, uh, you do a really great job at ignoring the backlash, ignoring uh, the negativity that comes as a result. I don't do a great job at ignoring it. I see it. I see it. <laughs> I now, see it. Oh, I see it. Now, what I do a great job at is not responding to it the way that people want you to respond to it. Um, but so on I the don't. Right day, you catch Daddy on the right day, though. You catch me on the right day. <laughs> All right. If I have time, if a client has rescheduled, <laughs> I could add a, a little one-two to the conversation. Um, However, no, seriously, I do a great job now of uh, just not responding the way you want. And now I do a great job at scrolling through the comments really quickly. Um, Like I'm talking about in my notifications, I'd never go back to a post anymore to look for the comments ever. Like Mm -hmm. I already know that's a danger zone because I'm about to be hot. All right. Um, And so I, I recommend that if you are somebody who's dealing with this and you've got people who are judging you, stay out of your comments as much as possible. Um, if you are in your comments, uh, block people. Just I, I block people every day. I block Just people block every day, day, all day. <laughs> like I block them every day, all day long. Because it's, you can say things and you can disagree, but there's a certain way you're not going to speak to me. And in that regard, I will block people all day long. But we're here and this imagine, is what we do. Imagine being attacked every single day of your life. Every day. Every day, right? You every get attacked. Day. Every single every day single I get attacked. Day. Yeah. Every single day I get attacked. Yeah, man. Y'all don't want this smoke. Yeah, keep your job. Don't pick up a camera. Don't become a figure. If you aren't willing, and I know what you're th- I know what you're sitting over there thinking. You're thinking to yourself, nah, I'm only giving positivity and I'm motivation. <laughs> How can people love positivity and motivation? Point it at Donnie. <laughs> here we are <laughs> i can think of several people who only gives positivity and then they're going to be told oh they're con artists they're fraud they're just saying all this stuff because they want to sell their book or they want to sell their membership or they want to do something and then don't forget that people aren't judging your content they're judging you as a person right yeah. i think an example of that is like Derek jackson mm-hmm. Derek jackson only spread what he thought was positive information to women about how to notice certain signs uh, with men, right? Um, And not wasting your time in the wrong relationships. And the whole time he was out there 
cheating and doing what he was doing and not in the same being, thing your baby daddy doing right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you but you stick by him. Mm-hmm. But you stick you stick beside him. <laughs> um, you know, he he is a good example of somebody who was out here, you know, and the men didn't like it because the men felt like, oh, you're giving away our plays. You're you're giving away our plays. You're telling all the secrets. But to women, they thought he was the best thing smoking. <laughs> but the way he lived his life behind the scenes, he was he was the piece of crap man that he was talking about. Was he cheating? I Viciously. He just got... Viciously oh, cheating. And how do y'all know that? Because he admitted it and they Did divorced he? as a result of it. He said that? He admitted it. He apologized. Uh, you know. Oh, I thought I only saw him say like, all right, well, me and... So and so is not working out. I didn't. Oh know. no, you missed the whole conversation. Then you know why? I don't be in people business. <laughs> That's why. That is not. That's the why truth. I didn't see it. I don't. You be in everybody's business. If it got something to do with me, or you're right in front of me, yes. But I don't. There ain't somebody I hang out with every day. Are we not talking about Diddy? Yeah, so I, you in his business? No, I'm not. I'm what I said was I'm not judging him for what y'all think he did or didn't do. You until, and J. Cole and Kendrick's business until they say something. I'm not in a business. You in a business? We up here talking about these grown men. That's a whole nother conversation. You in a business? No, but what I said was we don't know his business enough to be able to create a conversation around it. Okay, well, Derek Jackson was all over the blogs. Okay, and he said he was out here. Yeah, he had to admit that. First of all, the evidence was there. The women and the vacation that he was on was just like, oh, I see you. Like, I see you. I thought that was after his divorce, no? No, for sure not. Oh. It was It was not. Um, I, do you, like, we see you. Do you see us seeing you? Okay, let me, ask, let me ask this question, not in defense, okay? If someone for years have given out information that helped you personally or... It was good. But then you find out that the person's human. And there's something about them that's not what you thought it was. Now, cheating is, in my eyes, I don't like that. And it's, uh, it's, it's one of the lowest form of man for me. Mm -hmm. However, some people don't regard cheating as that bad, right? It's just, especially when you cheat on somebody and the person stay with you. Mm-hmm. So we're mad at the person that did it, but nobody says anything about the person that stays with the person, right? So, so, <laughs> so what, what do we do? What do we do? If we find out that someone made a mistake that is no bigger than the mistakes that we all make, how do we judge that person? Mm -hmm. I what was do just we say? I was just having this conversation um, with someone maybe a week or so ago, uh, maybe two weeks ago at this point, uh, and we were talking about pastors, mm -hmm. and he was telling me that he didn't go to a particular pastor's church, mm -hmm. and, um, and I fully understand why. He said, you know, I know too much, and I have seen the human side of this person, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I know his indiscretions, and he's kind of got everybody fooled into believing that he's this perfect man. And I get it. I fully do. I do. I do get it. But this particular pastor, um, for me, even though I am aware of some of his indiscretions, for me, on a spiritual level, has encouraged me to build a closer, deeper relationship with God. And even at the time that I was introduced to this pastor, he empowered me to ask questions about the Bible and God's word that I was before that encounter embarrassed to ask. I was embarrassed to admit that I didn't have these answers. That pastor made me comfortable asking questions and getting a better understanding. So it's like years later now, I found out about all these indiscretions and blah, 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 blah. Do I just completely void the freedom in my spirituality and what I understand about God? Do I completely remove the fact that you led me to that now because you are a man of, of some, some serious discretions mm -hmm. uh, yeah. or indiscretions rather. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I believe that. And then I have a friend who um, is a pastor. I have a few pastor friends, but I do have a friend who's a pastor. And I remember hanging out one day, we're hanging out and he ordered, we're, we're all ordering drinks and he ordered a Coca-Cola. 
Okay. Clean Coca-Cola. When the waitress comes back the next time to refill our drinks, one of his friends orders two, like say Hennessy and Cokes orders two. And my friend didn't order another drink. Well, when the waiter brings waitress brings back the two Hennessy and Cokes, that friend passes the pastor the Hennessy and Coke. To everybody else, it looks like he's drinking the same Coke that he had. He, he poured it in his, it, it looks like the same Coke he had been drinking. And I'm like, why'd you do that? Why didn't you just order a drink? You know, and he's like, I can't be seen ordering a drink. You know, if people saw me ordering a drink, uh, I'd lose my congregation. I'd lose, I'd lose members in my congregation. And I'd never until that moment seeing a pastor as a human being mm -hmm. like, wow, you could lose your whole congregation because you ordered a cocktail and I get both sides. Yeah. So who's going to throw the first stone? Like everybody, everybody's got their thing that that's only, that's the only reason I'm not um, super. Uh, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I haven't made it my business to like point out a bunch of people's faults unless you sign up for the hot seat, and that's my job. You want me to coach you? Cool. I got you. This is what we are going to do. But I've not made it my business to do that. That's all I'm saying. So, um, do we lose? Do we lose, uh, yeah. Donnie's? Mm -hmm. IG? So, I, I haven't made it my business to that because, like, yo, who throws the first stone? Like, for somebody, do me a favor in the chat, put the little stone the little rock icon in the chat. If you have not done anything wrong in your entire life, and if people, if you had a big enough platform and people knew about it, they would cancel you too. So like, let's, let's give our people some grace. Okay. Let's just give a little, let, let your pastor order a drink. Do you let your pastor <laughs> order a drink? My pastor doesn't order drinks. I don't drink. How do you know? Because this particular pastor, nobody would ever say he'd order a drink. Yeah, well, I don't know. Guess what? I don't care. The information you that you're giving me. If you found out that your pastor ordered a cocktail, would, would you be done with the church? No. No. Yo, this is implying, Say this, is, can't get this is implying that the person, this is implying that the person that we're looking to is God. Mm. We're implying that this is the Christ because they're without sin. They don't do anything wrong. That's our implication. No. If you, if you, listen, I've had some mentors of mine that have given me really, really valuable information. And then I find out that they are human. And it makes me say, oh, wow. They shouldn't have done that. I'd have never thought they would do that. But wow, they're human. And what they did could be considered no more heinous than anything that I've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? I don't, um, I, say, I say this a lot. I believe that I am a good husband most of the time. I've never put my hands on my wife. I've never yelled at my wife. You've put hands on your wife. I've never. I, I put hands you, on my you wife. You put got, some hands on your we wife. We got a couple of children. It's <laughs> <laughs> evidence. I, on a regular basis, I put hands on my wife. <laughs> I never abused. However, when I get in my feelings, I go radio silent, which I can almost imagine what she's going through, which could be torture. I don't know what he's thinking. He's not expressing to me how he feels. That could feel, in her situation, just as bad as somebody else that hits their wife, but at least they show their emotion to say, yo, I'm sorry, I got, uh, I, I got kind of caught up. This is how I'm feeling. This is why I did this. Let's make up. I love you. I'm sorry that I hit you. In that situation, what's worse? Mm -hmm. Now, from your perspective, outside looking in, we can make a judgment call on what's worse. However, when you're in it, how do I know? Like, what that might tear my wife up when I get like that. And I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to get out of that without time. And I got to, like, go hang out with my friends 
and forget why I'm so mad to come back and just give her a random hug that I don't want to give her, but I give her a hug. And that's my, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> that's my, that's my, uh, I, I don't, I'm, o- I'm over what we were on. Are you a hug, kiss on the cheek. You, you want something from the store? <laughs> I'm about to order some food. You want some? <laughs> you hungry? That's my. That's my. I apologize for acting that way. So I'm just saying, throw the first stone, because y'all have done some weird stuff that nobody knows about, or your brand isn't big enough for anybody to care. But you get canceled too. So that's all I have to share. Yeah. However, I do want to re-put that invitation out there. I think that'd be a good conversation. If you've been called a scammer, come on. It won't be the hot seat, but it'll be the same intensity. We'll sit right here, and it's my job to understand why people call you that and see if it's true. But just know you're guilty until proven innocent. So if you are a close friend of mine, just we, we won't be friends after this. Yikes. I'm just saying. Because I then I have a responsibility, I have a job to do. But David. if you can defend yourself, then hey, you're good. David is calling all accused scammers Call Let's go. to the chair. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. The tacos are here. I'm hungry. Did we did we miss anything? Did we leave anything out? I, we're gonna catch it in this next episode. Hold on. Can we give um some information? <laughs> Let's give maybe like three points real quick of what they uh, some 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 points they can walk away with. What is this? What's it's this? my little. Let's let's give them something. That's my that's this my is offering. Your, this is Spider your Spider Man. This it's about to get deep. <laughs> okay, one takeaway from this conversation: Pre- as you build your business, prepare to be attacked. I don't care how good you think you are or how good your work you think. They said Obama was the leader of the Illuminati. Mm-hmm. They said. I think it was like Obama is building underground trenches for the successful people while he was in office and he's going to bomb the world to start over. I saw all kind of weird stuff when President Barack Obama was in office. They said he was the cousin to bin Laden himself. They said that was his relative. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. So just... Be prepared. So that's my, my first point. Prepare your mind. Wait a minute. For now, attack. now I get to go to the second. No, that's I was, I was just reiterating my one. Okay. You done? I was. I guess I am now. You are now. I like to start with a point and end with the same point. So it's like sandwiched. Okay. You got yeah. it? Okay. Yes. So prepare <laughs> yourself for the target on your back, meaning there's going to be a lot of comments. It's going to be a lot of people who say stuff, even people that you were once close with. I mean, I have those stories too of people that I was once close with that are on the other side attacking, even though like I've helped them for 10 years. Raggedy. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. I've shown love for 10 years and now you're on the other side attacking. Just prepare yourself. That's the epitome of you say no one time and they forgot all the times you say yes. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. I would love to have a whole. mm, Okay. Because that'll get me riled up. All right. You say no to somebody one time and it wasn't even a no. There's one simple misunderstanding. Let's not get into the specifics. One time. And then that person starts attacking you. They they join the other side and now they have all of the spite and the attacks and it's like, did you ever love me in the first yeah. place? Point number two mm. is even though you are going to be judged and judged harshly, don't quit. Yeah. Don't let anybody talk you out of your mission. It's beyond what your dream is. It's what your mission is. What are you purposed to do in this life? The judgment is going to come. Guess what? Judgment is going to come if you're sitting at home and doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And judgment is going to come if you are out in this world doing everything that you can to change your part of the world. Do not quit. 
Show up, expect the judgment, and move through it anyway. Yeah. And point three, on your way up, create as many allies and show as much love and get as many receipts as possible because trust me, you are going to need them. Okay? Yep. The people who are big now that are easy to get canceled are people who didn't show a lot of love on the way up because then they start to tear you down. So on the way up, get as many receipts. Listen, Donnie has thousands and thousands and thousands of people who she's helped before she became the Donnie Wiggins that you all know today. We have the, we have the footage of us doing small workshops for $10 with no upsell. I didn't even know what an upsell was. We're just <laughs> doing an event because it's cool and y'all come and we support you all. We've got so many receipts for so long, it's gonna be very, very difficult to cancel us, okay? So just on your way up, on your way up, just remember where you're at. Don't start creating enemies. Don't start stepping on people. Show as much love as you can on the way up. That's for sure. That was three points. Did you want more? Nope. All right. That is it, you guys. Oh, last, okay. last thing. All right. Shouts out to Soul Liberty 409. Fresh. You feel Fresh. Me? And, and got these early. Mm. Regular human beings got them on a certain date. People that are connected with Celebrity 409 got him a month in advance. This guy's special. And, yo, you should see what he sent me. To. Did, the, did the mail come today yet? Did you get those black and white patent leather joints? Which ones? Okay, he sent me some ones, black and white patent leathers. I didn't even ask for them with a gold uh, wow. Nike check. They Boy, hard. Wait till you see the dunks. They like a... Oh, my gosh. Wait, I, hope, I hope they're here by the next... Shout out to Celebrity 409, yes. the official sneaker plug for the Social Proof Podcast. His business is blowing up, too. Yeah, yeah, he's going crazy. He's going crazy. Every time I see his profile, he's uploading new inventory and shipping out packages. And his stuff is legit. You don't have to worry about, you know, if, if this is real, if it's authentic. His stuff is the good stuff. Yeah. Oh, also, so I have uh, two quick shout outs. Uh, for Podcast Summit, for one, get your tickets to Podcast Summit, podcastsummit.com. Uh, Ecamm Live, we are streaming right now. We're streaming, on, and send me a DM for my affiliate link. But we're streaming right now. People are like, yo, how you get your camera so clear on Instagram? We're actually on Instagram right now. We're streaming on Instagram. We're streaming into Actionable CEO. We're streaming into Morning Meetup, which are private communities. We could be streaming on Facebook, YouTube, all of it right now with Ecamm Live, okay? That is a software that we're using. Uh, we could put uh, like pictures and photos and we can run a video, all that kind of stuff from Ecamm. They're a sponsor of Podcast Summit. Also, Supplement, Insulate Water Bottle Company. This is the only, the only black-owned insulated water bottle company. I met this brother a couple months ago and he is absolutely brilliant. And um, he's, uh, he's sponsoring Podcast Summit. We have an experience for you all where I don't want to give it away, but make sure y'all uh, go to Supplement if you want to, you want a discount. Y'all do me a favor, actually. I need a $20 favor. My Morning Meetup family did it. Next, this coming Monday, we're going on a hydration challenge. And actually, this has helped me drink so much more water because it's like your little cup. You just walk around drinking water all day. I drink like three or four of these every single day. And um, use code social proof. I don't get no affiliate or nothing. That's just a discount for you. Okay. Use code social proof at checkout. Go to supplement.com, S U P L M N T. S U P L M N T.com. Keeps your cold drink cold, hot it's drinks hot. Like your adult sippy cup. Mm hmm. <laughs> all right family we love y'all we are out peace if you like the video that you just watched click this one you're gonna like this one maybe even more click it right now